What's up guys, welcome back to JSIG Poker where I bring you guys tips, tricks, and strategies on how you guys can make more money playing PLO in your local games or live games. So if you guys wanna learn how to get better, then hit that like and subscribe button for more content. Uh, today I'll be showing you guys how to manage your bankroll properly so, um, you know, <laughs> you can always continue playing and enjoying PLO without ever having to go broke. That way you can continue crushing in the long run. Uh, now, these bankroll management strategies are going to be different on whether you're a full-time pro, a semi-pro, or just a recreational player that likes to play for fun. Uh, let's first go over how you should manage your role if you're playing full-time and PLO is your primary source of income meaning all your bills you pay including rent uh, utilities uh, groceries auto payments kids etc is relied on you making money from plo uh, this is something i don't recommend unless you've already been doing this for a long time and already have years of these expenses saved up uh, which i know sounds difficult and trust me guys it is especially with the cost of living and inflation right now uh, but if you're a full-time pro and you've been struggling with managing your bankroll, then here are a few rules you can live by to help extend your career so you can overcome the high variance involved. Uh, number one, so being a full-time pro, have at least two to 300 buy-ins to be safe of whatever game you're playing. Uh, PLO has insane swings and you can easily lose five, 10, even sometimes 20 buy-ins in a single session and hundreds over a downswing, 50 plus. This is gonna give you enough cushion in case you have a bad run of cards. Uh, if you're a semi-pro, if you have a part-time job and have other sources of income that can help supplement your professional poker life, then you may be able to have less of a cushion because you have consistent income on the side coming in. And even if you're losing, you can always work more to generate more income. In cases like this, uh, it can be beneficial to keep one to 200 buy-ins, but I don't suggest anything less than that. Uh, recreational, if you have a full-time job, then these rules can vary heavily depending on your skill level, how much money you have in the bank, how often you play, and how much you earn from your job, and how much disposable income you have left after all your expenses. If you have a ton of money saved up or have a high wage, then you may not have to worry about it so much you can possibly have you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 binds at all times. Uh, if you don't earn as much or don't have much left over, then you may wanna have 100 plus binds at any given time. Uh, there are rules I generally suggest you follow no matter what category you fit in, uh, especially if you're in a big downswing, which is very, very common. Uh, number one, guys, you gotta drop in stakes. If you lost multiple sessions in a row, you're starting to get stressed about the swings, then it's time to take a break or drop down in stakes. If the money you're losing in the game you're in is stressing you out or making you nervous, that means that more likely you're gonna start making decisions based on emotion and not based off you know, game theory and strategy. This will affect your win rate and cause you to lose even more Plus, it will halt your learning progress, which is crucial for being a full-time pro, um, right? So obviously, that's super important. Uh, number two, guys, take more breaks. I always recommended playing less during losing stretches, taking more breaks, and most importantly, don't neglect other things in your life that can help maintain your longevity, like healthy eating habits, physical exercise, uh, being social, meditation, sticking with your hobbies. A fresh perspective in life will give you more hope, raise your dopamine, and allow you to play without any judgments or feeling like you're gonna lose again. Sometimes it's even a good idea to take a week or two off. Go on a hike, take a vacation, refresh your body and mind so you wanna play again and don't feel like it's a chore. Poker is something you should do just because you enjoy it uh, with any career in your life. Guys, life is too short to do otherwise. Um, number three, you know, you gotta study more, all right? Downswings can, you know, many times make us wanna play even more to get out of the downswing quicker. The problem is because rarely do even pros play their A game during downswings, there tends to be a lot of spots we miss that we can learn from. 
if we just took the time to sit back and analyze what we could have done better. Uh, this is why I always suggest to focus even more on maintaining good studying habits, reviewing hands, analyzing even more of other people's plays. Uh, let's say you continue playing through a downswing and fail to get better. I mean, that means the players we play with will be able to exploit us over and over again, which means there will be a ton of money we lost without even knowing it. Whereas if we took the time to study, we would be able to counter our opponents much better, which can many times turn the tables, help us gain momentum, resulting in a possible upswing. Some ways I like to study are analyzing my hands after every session, uh, watching videos, uh, studying ranges and game theory and analyze minds, analyzing my opponent's play and what their thinking was. It's important to not only understand uh, our perspective, but also our opponents, because it can help us understand how we're being exploited and how we can avoid that from happening the next time. Um, and number four, I mean, guys, you got to table select whether you're in a downswing or not. It's important to table select and find the games you know you will be profitable in. Put your pride aside. If you think your game isn't very good or the players are at a decent skill level and there's not many spots, then it's time to leave and find another online game, table, or casino to play at. Guys, don't get impatient looking for games because there are plenty out there if you just look around. Playing in a game full of pros or nits will drastically affect your win rate and waste a ton of your time. If you're playing in private games, make sure the rake isn't so high to where everyone in the game is just losing money. These games are only worth it if the game's very good or the stakes are so high that paying the extra rake is worth it, right? Uh, number five, this is huge. This is something I've struggled with in the past um, and I've seen other people do it before. Uh, you know, avoid lifestyle inflation. <laughs> Always make sure to avoid spending more uh, just because you're winning. Understanding downswings are just around the corner. And if you spend all your winnings and then you hit your downswing, all that work will go to waste. Keep a consistent budget no matter how much you're winning. I'm sure you can find different channels out there that can help you with that. Um, you know, the, the next thing is, is get staked. Find a backer. Sell, sell pieces or swap with friends that you trust. If there aren't any smaller games around and you can't drop in stakes, then it may be wise to look for someone you trust to stake you. Uh, or you can swap action with other players you trust or sell pieces of yourself to, to people who you know, um, you know, who, who know you're a profitable player. All these are good ways to lower the variance in the long run as it can help you continue playing in the long run without worrying about having to risk so much money in your uh, account to where your risk can go and broke. So guys, in conclusion, managing your bankroll according to your situation is by far one of the most important things in poker. Without money management, no matter how good you are, if you don't manage your money, your skill won't matter. If you don't have money to implement it, almost every poker player I know has gone almost broke or broke in their career uh, or close to it, and that's really hard to get back from. It can affect your psyche and confidence and can potentially force you to quit altogether. And there's, there's too much money in poker not to continue playing. So guys, those are my personal strategies on how you should manage your bankroll in PLO. If you guys like this video, hit that like and subscribe button and let me know in the comments section how you guys manage your bankroll. Um, do you guys play full time? Are you part time? Are you recreational? Do you even have bankroll management rules and how that's going for you? Um, and until the next video, let's crush it at the tables and peace out, you guys.